Yo. Yo. What's up? I'm Adam. I'm Patrick. And we are Guy in a Cube. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for our brand building panel. Uh, it's exciting. It's something I'm very passionate about. Patrick is passionate as well, but he kind of, you know, he's just, he, he likes to be along for the ride. <laughs> so so he, he keeps me honest. He keeps me honest. So uh, before we get in, I've got some housekeeping things before we actually get into everything. Uh, first off, be sure to explore everything that's being offered in the past virtual summit. Uh, there are a lot of things still going on. I know we absolutely miss being in person. And uh, we've been we've been involved with Pass for a long time, and uh, but a lot of those items are still available today, like the the booth stuff. The there's a lot of panel discussions, so many things that you can just take advantage. So don't don't just hang out in the sessions, although those are great. But check out everything else, uh, the sponsors and and whatnot. Check out virtual groups. Uh, SQL Saturdays are always going on, so there's there's tons of stuff to do. Um, also, please be sure to fill out the session evaluations. Uh, this is really important both for PASS as well as Patrick and I. We, we take these very seriously and we look at these to improve what we do. Um, and then also, uh, we're gonna, this is kind of going to be an open discussion and uh, we will have, uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of content just to prime things and then we'll head over to your questions. So be sure you ask those on the questions tab and not the discussions tab uh, to be sure it's going to help uh, the, the moderators and everyone just keep track of things uh, easily. So, so get those queued up and we'll, we will get to them very shortly. Uh, as we mentioned before, I'm Adam and Patrick LeBlanc is here as well. We are Guy in a Cube. Uh, we do, we have a little YouTube channel uh, that we've been doing for a while. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, it's, it's actually been our side gig for a long time. And uh, so that's, that's what we've been doing, but we built up Guy in a Cube. And so we wanted to, I'm going to show a little bit about what, what we've done with Guy in a Cube and how we got there. And then we'll, we'll kick over to fill in the gaps with whatever questions you have. And so we'll look at what is a brand uh, how we did it, and then go into your questions. So I like to start off with this. The There's a book out there called Primal Branding by Patrick Hanlon. And uh, the one of the things that it says is brand is a, a brand is a belief system, right? So it's when you think about things like Nike and Apple, Microsoft, these are all things where they, they've been around for a while, but people relate to those items. And so that's when we think of a brand, those are typically the type of things that we think of uh, when, we, when we look at that. And this book breaks down that a, a, a brand itself has kind of seven different pieces of it or components of it, what it refers to as the primal code. So every brand has a creation story, how it got there. There's some sort of creed behind it. Um, there's icons and rituals, uh, what it refers to as pagans or non-believers or the haters, right? So every brand has its haters, has its zealots, uh, things of that nature, sacred words that go along with it. Uh, so you'll notice when we started off this session, and we do this for everything we do, whether it's our YouTube videos, our live stream, um, the uh, just conferences when we're in person and, and doing sessions, we start off everything with a yo, uh, so that's that's kind of our ritual as well as one of our sacred words now and people relate to that and, and do that and we we have some haters on that front too right so there's yes. some people that say like <laughs> Patrick knows that really well he's like you need to stop the yo and I'm like yeah I don't think we're gonna do that uh, and then there's leaders associated with that brand so for guy in a cube obviously it's Patrick and myself um, and so you know that for Microsoft you can relate to Bill Gates uh, things of that nature right and Steve Jobs for Apple so so these are all things that the book goes through I definitely recommend if you are serious about building a brand definitely check out this book there's a lot of great information inside of it uh, and then the primal code creates the organization's products and services that people believe in so all of those things wrap into that and when when I look at guy in a cube and when I've talked with Patrick about that those are things that we're conscious about and that we do uh, from the rituals that we have in the videos. And, and there is consistency there um, that if you really pick apart things, you can kind of figure out what those are uh, and what's, what's kind of the tradition there. All right. So looking at Guy in a Cube, just real quick, uh, the timeline of when we did this, we were actually talking about this before the session went live and Patrick was kind of amazed and how time flies. And just from, I, I don't know how you feel, but, for me, time is kind of, it 
bleeds together. Like I think yeah. things were like happened last month, but in reality it was like eight months ago. And like, I it's just kind of like a blur. It's just yeah. a blur right now. Yeah. It's just a big blur. Yeah. Right now. yeah. Yep. Um, so we, so the very first upload of, uh, on Gynacube was this, I want to say December 4th of 2014. Uh, so that was the very first video that was uploaded. Um, so that was, it's coming up on six years ago, uh, that that happened. So we've been doing it for that long. Uh, and, uh, one thing you'll notice here is that the, just looking at the subscribers of the YouTube channel, it's, it's an exponential growth in terms of what we've experienced. Everyone's mileage will vary. Some people get lucky on YouTube and, you know, they'll, they'll go, they'll just skyrocket. Pat, Patrick, you were talking about your son, PJ, and yeah. he's on TikTok. How many, how many followers does he have now? Uh, 1.3 million uh, on TikTok. 1. Over, 3 over what time period? Uh, honestly, it was when the, about a month after all this started. So I think it was April. Yeah, April it was of this year. Very quick. Yeah, it was very, very quick. quick. Very quick. Uh, obviously, TikTok's a different beast than, yeah, than yeah, YouTube. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, so, but but if you just look, we hit a hundred thousand subscribers in April of this year, and we're targeted. the The projection is that we'll hit two hundred thousand subscribers sometime between April and June of twenty twenty one. Um, so that's a hundred thousand subscribers in about a year's time. Wow. Uh, compared to like the first four hundred subscribers we had took a little over a year to get right. That's insane. Um, and, and I can, and there's things that we've done in our timeline where we can call out, like there's certain moments that, that things happened. Um, so in February, 2016, I actually went through, I got serious on the YouTube side and went through, I paid like out of pocket, like a thousand dollars for this one course with 20 other creators. And, uh, you know, I can actually see in the, the overall stats of the channel that there was a significant bump around that time. And that's when I started implementing things. Patrick joined us in 2017 or joined me in 2017. And then we launched our first course in 2018. And so there's things that just kind of happen that uh, are, I'll call them like tent poles in the timeline of, of that caused some of that growth. Um, and in terms of where we're at today, just to just give a quick look at some of our numbers and stats. Um, so you can see we've had over 10 million views. The, the, the views, watch times, and subscriber number that I have there, those are lifetimes so over the course of Gynacube as a whole. And then right below that, you can see the 28-day listings. Um, so we've had uh, over 500,000 views in the last 28 days. Um, and then watch time is over almost 34 hours of watch time in the last 28 days. Um, so you can see those. And, and again, that's been a journey, right? That's, we've watched that over time as that's increased. Um, and then I've got Facebook and Twitter there as well. So we do look at social media. Social media is um, definitely a factor in brand building. Um, so those are things that you have to pay attention to. Uh, but just, uh, just be aware of that. All right. So how did we do it? Uh, I, I would say, Patrick, I don't know if, uh, uh, it, it would be fair to say that I've, I've been the one that's really been focused on that part of yeah, Guy in a Cube. Absolutely, um, man. Absolutely. So. I'm just a pretty face. That's all. I'm just a pretty face. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so what I've done over the time, even before Patrick joined Guy in a Cube, I've read a lot of books. Um, uh, the tools that are used for, for doing uh, content creation. Uh, so whether it comes to like the Adobe products, Camtasia, some of the other tools that are out there to learn insights and analytics uh, in those things. Um, and also I watched a lot of YouTube. I still watch a lot of YouTube. Um, so I remember when I went through that course back in 2016, we were reviewing channels and breaking down channels uh, all the time. And by the end of that, uh, my recommended videos on YouTube were all makeup channel I remember you told me about that yeah. i remember yeah. you told me people are like what and i'm like if you think about it because part of youtube and part of the the technical piece of videos is lighting yeah and uh, makeup channels their lighting is amazing yeah. right and so a lot of them have behind the scene videos of like how they edit or what their setup is and so i learned a lot from that and just looking at different genres and deconstructing things so yeah, yeah. so that that's how i did it um oh whoops Sorry, I thought that was already up. Ah. All right. Uh, so I want to kick this off to what questions do you have from a brand perspective? Anything is fair game. Uh, so whether or not we can, we'll, we'll try our best to answer it, at least in the context of what we've had from building Guy in a Cube and just other things that I've seen and researched and, and whatnot, uh, whether it's related to YouTube, social media, 
um, you know, working in conferences, uh, you know, presenting things. Uh, so, so anything is fair game. And if, if we don't have a whole ton, like there, there's other stuff that Patrick and I can talk about to kind of fuel yep. some of that as well. So, so Craig, do we have, uh, do we have anything ready to go? Yes, we do. We have Andrea that asked, should that be guys in a cube since there are two of you? Oh, oh we get that. That's and, actually not the interesting question. No. Andrea. Um, so, so this is part of the thing of a brand. Uh, so when, when you think of a brand, there's kind of two ways you can go down. One is actually going with a name like guy in a cube or you know, Microsoft, something that's not your personal name. Um, or you can go with your name. So there's a lot of people that do that. Um, I actually struggled with that in the beginning when I started this. Um, and I was just like, no, I'm going to go with Gyna Cube. And I made sure that it wasn't specific to a technology. So one thing you'll notice, Patrick's Twitter handle. What, what Patrick, what's your Twitter handle? Patrick DBA. DBA. Are yeah. you a DBA anymore? Not anymore. Not, Not anymore. anymore. <laughs> uh, you were in yesterday's session. I so was, was in yesterday's thing. session, yes. right? I was um, an expert DBA. Yep. Yeah. So I so I wanted to pick a name that wasn't tied to like SQL or Power BI or something. So it's a it's a portable name that I can shift it if I need to over time. Um, that's also why going with your personal name is kind of safe because yeah. you are always you. Um, and when I created Guy in a Cube and it was singular, um, it was just me, right? I was, I was actually in a cubicle uh, working uh, in one of Microsoft's call centers in support. And uh, I, I did not have the forethought to uh, think about other people being involved. I honestly didn't think this was going to go anywhere. And uh, so I did Guy in a Cube. And at, by the time Patrick joined it, it was pretty cemented at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And it like changing the brand name at that point and everything like the website, the Twitter handles, the, the YouTube channel, all of that. I'm like, I'm not even going to bother with it. It's just guy in a cube and yeah. that's the brand. And uh, yeah. So, so people can, can kind of come up with their own result of <laughs> wh whether that's what that is. But the, I, I said, that wasn't the interesting question. The interesting question is what happens if we bring a woman on board and would she have to shave her head? I don't know. Um, it may be a company requirement. Time, time, you know? time will, time will tell. All right, Craig, what's, what's, uh, what's next? Uh, we have one from Ray Kim, and where did that go? Ray says, "I lost my job due to COVID back in April. As a direct result, I started my own LLC. I'm nice. still job hunting. How much should I put into my job hunt Ooh. as opposed to my LLC?" And uh, he does have a blog, and he's doing a presentation on blogging tomorrow. And he is a SQL Saturday speaker. Wow. So, so one, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I will tell you right now that we have a day job. Yep. And Guy in a Cube is kind of the side gig, and um, this is this is a choice you're going to have to make and determine where it is you really want to be. Where's your follow? First, I would say, where's your passion? Like, are you, do you really enjoy it? Do you love doing uh, those type of items that you're working on for, you know, the, the blogging, the, the conference speaking, the, the, whatever the topic is, do you love that? Um, and can you pour in your time into it? Um, if, if you're not a hundred percent or 120% committed to that, um, I would say, you know, uh, you may want to still do the job hunt. The, the other thing too, is, uh, one of the things that's that Patrick and I have struggled with too, is the amount of time you invest in it too. Pa passion is part of it. Uh, but the other thing is, do you feel uncomfortable? And I would say in your situation, you feel very uncomfortable right now, or un there's uncertainty, right? Because if you don't have an actual, uh, you know, job bringing in a paycheck, you got to pay your bills, right? So that's the big thing. Typically, folks that and and what I've seen of, uh, you know, if you've already got a job and you're trying to transition to, uh, you know, your personal business, uh, a lot of folks have said you want to kind of do that potentially slowly or at least have that transition, right? Don't just jump. Uh, you want to have uh, something to smooth that out a little bit. And so having uh, the day job brings in that paycheck so that you can at least pay your bills and then focus your other time on on the other thing. But not having that job gives you that kind of focus to to work on that LLC, right? So 
what, what so, are you thinking there, Patrick? Well, before I joined Microsoft, before I joined Microsoft, um, I was kind of where, where Ray is. I was still working, but I was leaning towards, hey, do I go work for Microsoft? Do I start my own company? I had already started doing some consulting and I was blogging and I was presenting a lot. I was a SQL Server MVP. I had written some books and it was kind of like, hey, I need to make this decision. Do I continue down this path of a independent contractor or do I go work you know, for another company? And to be honest with you, for me, it's like talking to people that's been there. That's how I really made my decision. So I talked to lots of people that had already you know, been down the path of, do I go independent? Do I go um, and get a job? And if you've never been independent before, you definitely should go talk to some guys that's done the independent consulting because I was independent for a short period of time. And if you don't work, you don't eat, right? I know you're in a situation right now where you're unemployed and you clearly understand that. But for me, at least right now in these, especially in these trying times, I will continue my job search but if I could, you know, do some LLC, do some consulting, do some con contracting on the side, I mean, you know, it's a balance. And if you can figure out how to balance them with whatever else is going on, I have a family, you know, I have my wife, my kids, though, yeah. those are the only two people that trump everything else. Yeah, three people, sorry, that trump it. So if you can find a balance where you can do both, hey, do both, you know? And, and Patrick, you and I have talked about a lot too. Yes. Of like, look, if we were single and we didn't have the family or any oh, of that, man. like, oh my gosh. Man, like that, yeah. So, I live in a but, one bedroom studio and eat ramen noodles, you know? But we, we both got families and, you know, we've got to pay the bills there and we yeah. got to make sure we're secure from that standpoint. So those are all yeah. factors as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so Ray, I feel for you. Um, uh, and I hope that, uh, you can, you can figure that out and, and continue to be successful. Yes. yes. So. But don't, don't stop presenting. Don't yeah. stop blogging. One of the things I, I hate to keep pounding on this, but when I joined Microsoft, I remember I was at a conference. I hadn't been at a conference speaking like a SQL Saturday in a bit when I joined Microsoft. I lost myself at Microsoft. All my brand, my personal mm -hmm. brand that I had worked so hard for kind of lost it because I was working at Microsoft. I was like, I made it. I'm working at Microsoft. Not discount. Microsoft's great. We said this earlier. It's a, it's a wonderful job. Probably one of the best things that's happened to my career. But your personal brand is your personal brand. And I had worked hard to build my personal brand. Yep. And then I lost myself at Microsoft. And then fortunately, someone brought that to my attention because I was at a SQL Saturday and I was like, what happened to you? Where have you been? It's yep. like, uh, working at Microsoft, you know? Don't lose it. Once you start building it up, especially, you know, once you put the effort in, don't lose it. Keep working towards it, your personal brand. Because when people think of Microsoft, they don't think of Patrick. You know, they think of, like Adam said, Bill Gates or Windows or Excel or something like that. But when they think of a guy in a queue, they go, oh, Adam and Patrick, you know? Yep. So you continue to build your brand. Don't lose yourself in whatever job you do get. So. Yeah, go, going back to also the previous question about, uh, you know, you know, should it be guy in a cube, guys in a cube or whatever? Like we, we decided to go, or I decided to go with the, the guy in a cube versus my personal name. And so Patrick, you just said that, uh, you know, when people think guy in a cube, they think Adam and Patrick. And I'm like, in some cases, they probably don't even know our name, right? They probably they just don't. know us as guy in a cube, <laughs> right? Um, and, uh, and that's okay. But I mean, they recognize us. And yeah. like, we've been on calls with customers where our video is not showing. They're like, wait, you sound familiar. Sound and so it's, familiar. That's, and that's part of the brand building, yeah. right? So yeah. it's recognition and things of that nature. Yep. All right, cool. All right, Craig, what's next? This is a good uh, one. This is a good one. Yeah, yeah, I like this one. When are you guys going to do a song with Killer DBA? Uh, Homer. Homer. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Hello, so, Homer. So, so Patrick has a benefit of living in the same area as Homer. I do not. Um, I, I talked to Homer uh, probably two weeks ago, and Homer, I apologize. I was supposed to call you the very next day, but you know how life gets in the way. I will call you, and we will start working on that song. I promise. Yeah. yeah. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, what's next? Uh, this one's from Scott. Well, when you started out, did you have a list of topics you wanted to cover so that you could make videos at a regular frequency without worrying about what your next video would be? Nope. No, <laughs> we still no. don't. To, to be honest, to be honest, right? To be honest, we tried. We yeah. tried a couple we of months ago. Multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like. I got on the phone with Adam. This is true. Can't make this up. He's like, dude, we got to start planning our videos. Yes. I'm like, you're right, ahead. Adam. You're right. You're right. So I wrote out like a list of these four videos, and I did. I did these videos. You know, I didn't do them ahead of time, but I did this plan that we came up with. The very next month, it was like, yeah, dude, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Uh, 
And but now we do have to kind of plan because we did get a vid we do have a video editor now. And yep. so I would be honest with you, sometimes like my video would come out on Wednesday and Tuesday night, I'd be like, okay, dude, I'm I just uploaded it. I just uploaded the video. And then Adam's like, I got it, I got it. And then he would turn it around. One time I was at Past Summit. This is true story with Marco Russo. Marco and I did a video in my hotel room. The lighting was terrible. Everything. Thank God Mar was Marco was there video. because that was a he, did a whole, video. he did a whole bunch of work oh getting gosh. it set up. But this is a true story. So he was like, I saw him. I was like, Marco, you want to do a video? He's like, yeah, let's do it. So I went up to my hotel room. We recorded the video and I dropped it on the folder. I don't know what time it was, Adam. It, it was, was that like evening. 10, 11 o'clock at night or something. And like that. I saw Marco the next morning. I was like, hey, go look, the video's done. He was like, it's done already. I'm like, that's how we roll, man. That's just yeah. how we roll. Yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of planning. It's, it's, we it's we can't do that. We can't do that now uh, no. because of the video editor. We got to have at least a week ahead of time. Yeah. But uh, I, I will tell you when I first started out too, I was in support. And so originally the videos were very targeted on, you know, just how do you how do you troubleshoot and fix things? And so a lot of my content ideas came from just customer calls that I worked on in support. Uh, and even today, the stuff there are content ideas that we get. And there are times where we struggle with ideas for, yep. and when we just kind of pull things out and we're like, all right. Yep. And we know we have a, we have a feel for what we think will be good versus yep. not. Yep. Um, yep. And so we know like, yeah, that's not like, nobody's going to watch that. Um, yep. Sometimes we do it even knowing nobody's going to watch it just because it needs to be out there. But like the Mecham, like the Mecham. Mecham. Oh my gosh, the Mecham. Um, so yeah, it's uh, we we've been fortunate that we get just ideas and we'll we'll scour through and we try things and then those are our demos and yeah. so it's 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 never been an issue really for us. I mean, like I said, we we struggle sometimes, but over the over the course of Guy in a Cube, I've I've never been in a position where I just have no idea. Yeah. So yeah. there's yep. always All right. something. Yep. All right, Craig. Okay. This one's from Paul Turley. In oh, previous Paul. sessions, yeah, we've had interesting discussions about managing the balance between work and life, yep. day job, community, side gigs, gigs kids, relationships, yes. crisis, which yeah. is a little different for all of us. How have you found your work life boundaries and what have you learned? Oof. So, uh, so. The, 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 the only boundary, and I think I said this earlier, is so here's the limit. The family is above that limit. After that, right, it's work. And a lot of, Adam and I talk about this a lot. People are, how do you find the time to do this? So, and, and this is not me being, you know, harsh or when most people are watching football games or spending their times on the weekend or, you know, if I finish work early, if I get off of work, if we have a day off or something like that, I'm probably doing some guy in the cube stuff. You know, I'm probably trying to figure out what's the next video or building a demo or on the phone with Adam talking about, Hey, what are we going to do next? You know, and there's a, sometimes I want to, you know, watch some TV or, you know, shoot some pool or something like that. But, you know, you got to prioritize what's important. And so Paul, what I've learned, especially during this time is that um, the only limit, the only people that Trump reward, you know, the, the work that I'm trying to do are the three people that's upstairs right yep. now. Besides that, it's all, you know, I'm always trying to come up with, I was just telling Adam, I, uh, I figured out we have these confidence monitors in front of us. So I don't have to look down and I'm still looking down. We have these confidence monitors right in front of us. And I was taking a shower this morning and I was like, oh, I know how to get the zoom up on my confidence monitor. That's where, where all the ideas come from. Right? It's always, you know, and it, it, people may go, Patrick, you just work too much. We really don't. We really don't. We really don't. If we put in, we should the, work um, more, but we should work we more. We really should. <laughs> so anyway. we, we are, we are inherently lazy. Um, yes. and we, we talk about that all the time. We're like, like we, we could crank out all sorts of stuff. If we were putting in like, a, if yes. we put in a hundred percent in the guy in the cube and I'll be very frank and honest, we, we don't do that just because we, we do have a day job. So obviously yeah. that consumes time. We have, Paul, you mentioned it, the, the work-life balance. We've got our families. Um, we've got other stuff and like, I've even told Patrick, I've, we've, I've kind of pulled back a little bit. The, having the video editor helps cause that was a major time consumption on my part. Uh, that honestly took up a, a lot of time, probably yeah. 20 to 40 hours a week of doing video editing and having that video editor just lifted that off of my shoulders. And that was very recent. That was like, what, two months ago that we did two months, that? Two months. Um, and, uh, I, I 
told Patrick, I'm like, look, I just want to like enjoy life a little bit now too. <laughs> like, you know, let's take a breather. And yeah, you know, so I'm spending a little more time, you know, with the family and like playing some Maybe video, video games, games. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there's, there's a lot of things I like, I have time. Um, like the weekends for me, like we're not, especially with COVID, we're not going anywhere. So yeah. it's like, we're just kind of hanging out. So it's either, you know, watching TV or playing video games or working. So, and I'm not a sports guy, so I, I don't know. I am. That. So that's but, the problem. But in terms of finding time, like there's always time. I remember when I was in support um, and I, I got to the escalation team and folks that weren't on the escalation team would always ask, ask me like, how do I get to escalation? I'm like, well, what are you doing to get there? Uh, and they're like, well, I'm just, I'm working cases. And I'm like, yeah, you got to do more than that. Yeah. I'm like, they're like, well, what I'm like, just start blogging, like blog once, blog once a month. Like just start with that. That's 12 blogs a year. That's not a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm like, well, I don't have time for that. And I'm like, okay, well, when you come in in the, in the morning, like, what are you doing? Well, I'm working cases. I'm like, well, why don't you carve out a half hour on Wednesday mornings? The yeah. first half hour of the day, you just work on the blog. Well, but I need to get to my cases. I'm like, they can wait a half hour. I'm like, that's not going to be the end of the world. Like, so try and find some of those, those blocks where you can just kind of say, this is when I'm working on this. Um, the other thing I'll say is like our families have been extremely supportive over yes. the years. Uh, yes. Both of our wives are, you know, very much like do what you got to do. Um, and I will add to that. Like if there's a family thing that comes up, like someone's birthday or, you know, they want to go somewhere. I'm like that trumps, right? That yep. that's, we're going to, we're going to go do that. And I'll, I will make the time. And my wife and I, we, we communicate a lot. So that helps. Um, and, but we'll kind of plan out a little bit ahead for the month and think like, okay, what's coming up? What do I need? What do we need to do? Cause we do Saturday morning live streams. Uh, and so like, there's sometimes where Patrick is like, look, we're, we're going to go do something as a family. I'm not going to be on that live stream. I'm like, okay, well, let's figure that out. Yep. Um, so it's not, not the end of the world you just gotta, you gotta be intentional about it and, and make some of the time, communicate with the folks around you, um, and, and just find those pockets of time. The other thing, like for me, like the video editing, uh, even over the years, even before guy in a cube, my wife would, uh, um, she would get not, she would be unhappy with me if, if I stayed, uh, and worked after five o'clock. Um, and so that forced me to become a morning person. Um, so I, I tell people now, like I've, I've been like this morning, I was up was yesterday. I was up at 4am and then, uh, today I was up at like 4:30. Um, I have not heard an alarm clock in probably 20 years. Um, so it's, uh, my body is just adjusted to that. And that's because over the years I pushed myself to do things in the morning, uh, cause she's not unhappy about me doing that cause she's sleeping. So she doesn't care. Um, yeah. So I so I have more time in the morning, uh, and then you know by eight o'clock a.m. I kick over to the day job, and then you know go from there. So, and then do stuff on the weekend. So yeah, it's a balance. Uh, you gotta you gotta figure out what works for you. Yep. So, all right, Craig. All right, uh, we have one from Peter. What were your biggest barriers to getting your brand started initially? <laughs> And how did you overcome them? Whew. So, uh, so I was working at Microsoft uh, and I just started. So this is one thing I, I tell folks is I didn't ask permission to go do this. Like from a Microsoft perspective, I just did it. Um, I had this idea. I, st I was blogging before that. I was doing conference. Like I started speaking at PASS in 2008. Um, and then uh, I was doing some blogging. Some of the folks around me, I've always been fortunate that I've had natural mentors around me uh, that helped me with those things. And uh, I was just like, look, I'm going to start doing video, right? And I'm just going to throw it out there and I'm going to do it on YouTube. And that's where I created Guy in a Cube. And I did that, never asked permission from my manager or anyone. I didn't, I was just me. It was on my own time and I was just doing it. Um, and I, the core for me was I had to make sure I was getting my, my day job couldn't suffer from that, right? So I still had to do whatever I needed to do for, for my day job because that was a priority. Um, but uh that it's just something you've, you've got to work on. Uh, the, the biggest challenge for me there was I was thinking, cause I was, it was my own, like I wasn't consulting anyone about what I should be doing. I was just doing it. And I always made sure I aligned to the business, right? So I'm not slandering Microsoft. I'm just speaking, you know, this is technically how it works. This is, I'm not disclosing anything that's confidential. Um, it's just how you use tools, how you fix things. And uh, I remember thinking that marketing was going to be the one that would shut me down. Mm. And this is also with the guy in a cube. I was, I didn't have that forethought to think like, oh, I'll bring someone else on because I honestly thought 
either I, it was going to be a fad for me and I wasn't going to keep with it or uh, marketing team was going to shut me down because I wasn't like going through the proper channels or whatever. And uh, I remember uh, James Phillips, actually, the, the president of business applications group, when he first came on and took over Power BI, I was in Redmond and I actually had a one-on-one -on -one with him. I think at the time I had like a hundred subscribers, like I was just starting. And uh, I just had a one-on-one -on -one with him, talking with him about what was going on in support. And then I, I mentioned, I'm like, hey, you know, and I'm starting this, this YouTube channel and doing Guy in a Cube and like front of the funnel and just helping people and trying to deflect calls. And he was like, great. And then the marketing teams, they have always told me that they loved what I did. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and so the, the biggest thing was figuring out the time, figuring out like, am I going to keep doing this? And then as it went on, I have a natural affinity to gear. Uh, I like yeah. gear. Tell me about um, it. <laughs> I, I have a lot of gear. Um, and uh, so one of those struggles too is the financial side of it too. Like there's a lot of things I want. Um, it's not, I don't need any of it actually. Um, and then so balancing uh, with the wife uh, in terms of spending some of that money and uh, and getting that done. So those those were some challenges too. Well, um, I'll say when you first asked me, I remember this when oh, Adam Patrick was like, didn't want to do it. Hey man, you should join, <laughs> you know, you should, you should do some videos with me. It's like videos, you know, I tried that. I tried like, the YouTube nope. thing. I was like, I don't do, I, I like to be in front of people. I like to engage and if you've ever been to one of the sessions that we do i'm out in the audience at the beginning meeting people and chatting because i'm i'm kind of personable even though I, I you know i don't i i, I can't handle the audiences that much adam can yeah. even attest to that we're, we're, we're both introverts yeah so. it's, it's a struggle but i the, i say the biggest bar barrier for me was me you know that was because i was afraid i was like man I can't. and even adam i remember when we first started doing the videos he's like oh man you don't show up until about <laughs> fifth. We got to figure this out. Yes. And I was, I was afraid. I didn't want to do it. I was terrified. I was like, where are the people at? I need the people. Yeah, um, Patrick does much better, better with a live audience. He, and so he, he feeds off of that energy. And yeah, I just, I couldn't handle it, but Adam kept pushing, you know? And so my biggest barrier, honestly, right. I told my family, like, you should do it, dad. You should do it. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be in front of a camera, but it was <clears> me. And so once I overcame me, you know, and I think for us, it's a lot of times it is the person in the mirror you know and so you got to overcome yourself sometimes yep. you know yep. and, I, and i'll i'll say even today my biggest roadblock today is me yeah like in yeah. terms of the time and the fact that i'm innately lazy and trying to push past that right there's so many i have so many ideas you're not lazy um, man you're just no. efficient you're just efficient I don't, I don't know that i'm even that right now <laughs> um so yeah all so right. yeah okay. cool Great. all right craig good answers i yeah. like that good uh, this one's from Tim. Can you talk a little about, about the long tail of building a brand? How long did it take you before you started to see results from your brand building efforts? You should show the timeline. You should oh. show the timeline slide. So, uh, Yeah, let me. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about this a little bit of. So uh, like I said, first video was in 2014. This is actually a really good question. Um, and then February of 2016, I had like, it took me over what? A, like a little over a year uh, to get 400 subscribers. And that was with no engagement, no, no comments, very little, if any likes also at the time. And it's, it's interesting now too, because I, with, especially with COVID, everyone's from home, everyone's trying to figure out the video thing. Uh, Patrick comments to me too, like, man, there's so many people doing power BI videos now. Yep. At the time that I started doing it in 2014, there was very little. Um, very little uh, presence on YouTube. Uh, and so there wasn't, it was kind of like kind of open to, to go after. Uh, but also the problem with that is people weren't kind of, didn't have that mentality to go to YouTube either. And so that's why I, I think that's part of why, at least I like to personally think that's part of why it took so long to get to 400 subscribers. Um, it's probably completely wrong, but um, I'm just going to keep believing that. Um, and so in that time, typically what you see and what I've, what I've learned from others as well is that you go through a period where you're throwing things out there. And this is the hardest thing in the beginning where, and, and what Patrick talked about too, he's like, I'm just, I'm not, there's no people there, right? There's no feedback. There's no engagement. There's no, like, you're just like, why am I even doing this? No one's even paying attention to it. And, uh, you'll, you'll kind of go into this dip where you'll want to quit. Yes. Right. And you'll be like, look, I'm just going to stop this. 
Uh, and typically that's between the, in, in your journey, it's going to be like the within by the six to 12 month mark, that's where that dip's going to be. And it'll vary for everyone, but that's typically kind of where it is. And so you have to decide, are you going to push through that? And then it will get better uh, if you're consistent and you're doing things and, you know, everything there, there's work you have to do, but it should get better. Um, I don't know how fast it's going to get better, but uh, for, and for us, you can see like it's, it took a long time, even, even the, the, um, in terms of when we really started doing it, like it was, it took a long time. Even when Patrick joined, we weren't, it wasn't anything like little between five and 10,000 subscribers and there weren't a lot of views. Um, it took a long time. And, and so it's going to vary for everyone. Uh, the thing I'm seeing now is uh, new folks are going into YouTube and, and doing videos there. I'm seeing that their journey is not as long as ours has been. Um, so it, it could be maybe they're just doing better content. That's fair. Um, or it could be that, you know, YouTube is more of a norm. A lot more people are doing that. Um, it's a little more common now. Uh, so those are all things that kind of play into it. Um, so, yeah. So those are, those are all things that, that come into play there. I hope that answered the question. Yes, that was great. Thanks. Uh, right. While we're on YouTube, uh, how do you pick the content you deliver on you, YouTube? Is <laughs> gone? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think we touched on that a little bit. Um, uh, it's very random. <laughs> it, it is. And some, sometimes though, sometimes when we're working on something or, you know, we find out something, we'll, you know, we'll say, ah, that, that'll be a good video. And sometimes you, we just kind of stumble on it. And I remember one time I called Adam, I was like, did you know that was there? He's like, I did not. So it's going to be a good video. Um, and then the live stream, the live stream also contributes to it because sometimes the questions, it's really good questions on our live stream. And we take some yeah. of those and we make make videos out of it. We try, we try to, you know, come up with the schedules and everything like that, like I said earlier, but a lot of it is just, I think this is a good idea. Let's do a video on it. Yep. That's, that's usually oh, and, how And Patrick happens. will call me up too. He's like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going <laughs> to, we're totally going to like doing the always encrypted with SQL and, and on on premise on analysis Linux. services. Oh, this is going to be so amazing. And I'm like, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Nobody's going to watch that. Nobody's going to watch that video. And, uh, and then Patrick gets deflated. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. The, that's, uh, it's, that's good. Uh, we're, we're not, it's sometimes well, so like so like this week for example, there's a lot of great announcements on the Power BI side. Premium yep. per user, yep. uh, Gen two, new desktop just came out. So you'll go through these peaks and valleys where this is a peak, right? There's so many ideas for content that we can feed off of, um, and you know, uh, December is usually an extremely slow month uh, with nothing happening, and so sometimes you go in this dip and you got to really dig to figure out what you're gonna do and so. Um, before this, we said, ah, we're going to meet on Friday sometime, you know, in the afternoon, late day on Friday, and we're going to come up with all this content for the rest of the year. Uh, Watch. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys know if it happens. Oh, yeah. So we just talked about that earlier today. Yeah, we're like, all right, yeah. this Friday, we're going to figure out, map out the rest of. of yeah. Well, so, but we've mapped, we've done that, but we talked about that. We've done that before. And Patrick had this list and I had it set and we were talking with our video editor. Yeah, I think he only did one or two videos out of that list, and then the rest of it got destroyed. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. And uh, this one's from Matt. What type of correlation have you seen between income and brand strength? Hmm. Uh, I've seen, so for us personally, I mean, we've had our regular income from our day yeah. job. And so we've had flexibility, I would say, to, to focus on the gear and whatnot. So I've, I've been very fortunate. Um, uh, and, and Patrick has as well on that front, but I've seen people, what, look, all the stuff that we have, the gear and whatnot, you don't need any of it. Uh, a lot of it's more about the content than the equipment. And when we say, uh, you know, income versus brand strength, like, I don't know that there's, it, so does it, it helps? Yes. But is it directly correlated? I don't know. I don't think so. So I'll tell you this, I do not correlate anything about my brand. I don't associate it correlated with money yep. because this is, this is a passion, right? Yep. When I, when, especially once I got going with Guy in a queue, but even before when I was, you know, writing the books and I tried my own little YouTube, I was writing the blogs and then I joined Microsoft. And for me, like when I record one of these videos and I, and the video goes live and somebody posts a comment, 
that really helped me out a lot. You know, that uh, I was working on this for two days and wow, you post this video and it helped me solve the problem. Or we get a tweet. Oh man, you guys helped me pass the DA 100 yep. exam. That's yep. kind of like, that's my pay. That's my payment, you know? Or, the, now, or like those times where someone will drop a note just saying, you literally saved my life. Yeah. And I'm like, and they put context around that. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. We've been at conferences and people say, you guys helped me get a promotion, you know? Yeah. And so it may sound, you, you guys may that's BS, Patrick. You know, you want the extra money. I grant it, right? Any extra money we get is cool, but we spend it mostly on all these toys and stuff yeah. that Adam sends to my house. So <laughs> I don't get to enjoy most of that money. I'm telling you guys you if you want to build your brand and I, I mean I, I have chills right now if you can see this if you want to build your brand you have to find something that you like doing I, and i tell my wife this i tell my family this and it's gonna this is gonna sound bananas i hate the weekends because i don't have a reason to come downstairs and tinker around on my computer um, or learn something or you know i i it's it's I, I enjoy this. And that comment, that little comment or that person walking up to me at a conference going, dude, I got a promotion because of what you and Adam do. Yep. That's all the money I need. That that keeps me recording videos, yep. coming up with ideas. Cause I think if I was, if I, if my sole goal of doing guy in the cube was for a paycheck, I wouldn't be doing a guy in the cube anymore. Yep. I wouldn't be doing it right now. Yep. And so I would also add that, look, if we didn't have the day job, the day job helps yes. from a funding perspective, yes. but if we didn't have that, we'd figure out ways to monetize. Yeah. Um, and then past that though, what Patrick said is like, we don't, we're not doing this. Our goal is not the money. And so mm -hmm. I started uh, in the beginning, I talked about the the seven things of the primal brand and your creed and what's your, what's your value proposition for what you're trying to go after and what are your goals and Guy in a Cube has never been, our goal has never been, we're just going to make a ton of money. Like that's never, money's never even been part of it. No. Um, it's always been, even since I was in support and and what we've done with the community and doing, I remember we used to do pre-cons and because we work for Microsoft, uh, like when we do a pre-con, most people that present pre-cons, they get some money back. We don't get paid for nope. pre-cons at all. Nope. Nope. I remember we were talking, I think it was Jessica Moss. She asked, yeah. she's like, She's like, wait, you don't get paid for it? Like, why are you doing this? I'm like, we love doing it. We love it. And I'm like, we love like help, helping people like when the it. light bulb goes off and like, we didn't do it for the money. Like we're, you know, I've been, we've done pre-cons forever. Um, and you want uh, it past summit. There were yeah. what, 300 people there. Yeah. 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 Don't right. get any Hold of on. it. Um, and you know, that's, 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 that's our, that's our, our vision of, of yeah. what we look at. We, we like helping people that's our passion. And uh, so money's never been the thing there. So in terms of brand building, though, I would say if your goal is just to make money, that's the only reason you're doing this. Sure, yes, there are people that are successful doing that. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that's a bigger struggle to get to, to build your brand with that as your core focus. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's just not going to happen. I, I don't think. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, another one from Paul Turley. How do you guys stay humble and awesome at the oh, same time? Gosh. Paul, you think I'm humble? <laughs> what? <laughs> you think I'm humble? No, 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 I kid, I kid. I, I think it has to do with the passion. I yeah. really do, Paul. I think but, it has to and do with- And our focus, right? Our focus yeah. is the community and yeah. helping people. Yeah. That's our that's our goal, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, same, same question could be asked to you, Paul, because, I yeah. mean, you're humble. <laughs> yeah, and, Paul's exactly uh, the same thing. He's been doing this for a long thing. time and he's- yeah. That's all like his, he just puts himself into that stuff. He does. Right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I agree with you, Adam. It's, it's because of what our goal is. Our goal is yeah. to help, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's not about like, look in terms of like, uh, like where the brand has gone, like, is it cool? I'm like, sure. Yeah. Like when we go yeah. to conferences, yeah. I, I'm not going to say I don't enjoy that, no, but, it's great. It's awesome. but that's not, that's not what we care about. Like, that's not the big reason why we do it uh it's just a side effect of it um so yeah because when i go to a conference i'll be honest with you guys when i go to a conference i enjoy you know the camaraderie the people especially when you say oh, let's take a selfie and i'm like all right after the conference over let's go have a beer you know yep. let's go hang out let's just yep. you know i i want to be the most most approachable if you see me i remember yep. i was at past summit and these people were pointing at me i literally crossed the street and i was like hey how's it going i'm patrick you know yep. It does. I'm just regular for everyone that knows me. I'm just Patrick. That's, and he's just Adam. And if you we're, see us, we're just a guy in a cube doing the work. That's guys, it. man. Right. And it's that's just, the brand. 
It's the best. It's the best. So I won't, I won't lie. I like it. Right. I like, you know, people and hanging out with people, but I can't wait until whenever we have another, another in-person conference to actually, you know, hang out with some people. Patrick can get his energy back. Yes. (laughs) That's great. Great. All right, Greg. Here's, here's one from JP. How do you grow your social platform? Speaking seems to help with that, but it seems like the influencers do not focus their social content toward their profession, but rather to their personal life. How did you grow your social platforms? There is a balance there. So I think, uh, so part of it, well, there's a lot of things with it, right? So part of it is uh, the the content and the value that you're delivering. Uh, and then some of that is around attention. So like you, you have to get attention to build that brand and you have to keep that attention. And one of the big things you do there is consistency, right? So you've got it. We our, our schedule right now is Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we drop that at uh, 10 a.m. Central is when the videos drop uh, and it's weekly content. I would say if you're doing content in general, um, you, you need to do it at least weekly. Um, so if you do it less than that, again, it's about attention. And so if you do it less than weekly, you're not keeping that attention and focus on what you're doing. Um, and then, uh, you could go, I mean, if you want to do it every day, you could, but I think that's potentially overload for, for what you're trying to go after. Um, so consistency is a big thing. Um, the value is, is, is important. Um, so, so those are all things that you have to do, but uh, like one of the things that Patrick and I do in our content is it's not just about the tech, right? We, we want to have fun with it. We want to, it doesn't have to be, one of the things that, that drove me nuts was if you look at some of the, the corporate content that's out there, it's very formal. It's very, you know, I'm, I'm speaking to these things and you know, monotone voice and all that. I'm like, that's just not us. Right. Oh. And that's absolutely not Patrick. No. Um, and that, that's one of the things I like about Patrick, like, and why I brought him on a guy in a cube is we balance each other. So I would say I'm more of the corporate one as opposed to Patrick. Um, yes. And, Chaos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so we, we balance each other and that's why everything we do, it's better when we're together doing yeah. it as opposed yeah. to us doing it separately. Cause, yeah. cause Patrick, he, he does his things and sometimes it annoys me cause he'll just <laughs> go off all over the place. And I'm like, hey, you could have been a little more structured in what you were doing. Uh, just a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where you need to, uh, inject, I think a little bit of your personal yeah. stuff. Right. So, cause, cause with that, with Patrick, right. He, he brings personality to it. I tried, I, if you go back and look at our original content, oh, both of us, it was really bad. Um, we, we actually like, we couldn't even stand watching our own Ooh. stuff. It Ooh. was, Ooh. uh, I was Mr. Robot and, uh, and Patrick <laughs> was, like I said, he, he just didn't have energy until halfway through it. And, um, so, but now it's like, we put in our personality into those things and, and we get that too. Like we were talking about going to conferences, meeting people and like, we'll get comments like, Oh my gosh, you're exactly like you are in the videos. And I'm like, yep. that's just who we are. Like yep. it's be yourself and, uh, inject some of your personal stuff into that. Right. Or, or project that onto it. Don't, don't just have that corporate or, or the, the professional facade. Uh, it's, you've got to bring that personality and entertainment to it as well. Cause that's what people tend to latch on to is more of that. Um, obviously the content is good. The, the, the value is good. That's why they're there. But to, if you can be engaging and entertaining or, or just, uh, you know, bring some of your personality to it as well and, or some of your personal things too. So like in our live streams now, my wife is, she's, she's been dubbed chat master C, right? She, she cues up everything and, people engage with her. And so we bring some of our personal life into it. Patrick's daughter has been in a video. One of my daughters has been in a video. So we bring some of those things uh, to it. So that helps with, with building that brand, right? You're bringing some of the the person to the brand. All right, Craig. Great. What's up? Uh, Another one from John. Uh, He might've touched on this already. Should someone spend a lot of time learning about building a brand before they start recording videos? Nope. Um, so, con- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would say this. So, somebody told me this long time ago when I was first starting my blog, um, and it's just content, right? And so, when I, I was afraid, I wrote this blog post like eighteen times, rewrote it, rewrote it, rewrote. It. It's never going to be perfect. It's yep. never going to be perfect. Yep. So, uh, building your brand. So, I, I've had to, I've had to coach Patrick on that too yeah, on some of the yeah. video stuff. I'm like, dude, just go, just go, right? And so, like, right in this th- that video is building your brand. You know, yep. so. 
don't spend a whole bunch of time trying to make it perfect because it's never going to be perfect. If you watch one of my videos when I send it to Adam, <sighs> man, it's all over the place. But it looks like magic when it comes out, you know? And so just keep recording, keep writing, put it out there. When you put it out there, there's going to be people that say, this sucks, right? Why did you write a blog? I remember one of my blog posts I wrote on adding multiple columns using the T-SQL script. Man, I got, and I remember the guy, Steve Jones, most of you, a lot of you guys know Steve Jones. He was like, just put it out there. And I yep. put the blog post out there. A lot of people read it, a lot of good comments. And then there was this one guy who said, why did the author waste his time writing that blog post? And I was like, I didn't waste my time. I thought it was a really good, I didn't know you could do this. You know, it, it's not documented in the docs yeah. that Microsoft wrote. Um, and so to Steve's point, you can't worry about how great the content is. You can't worry about who's going to like it, who's not going to like it. Yep. And he goes, the moment you publish it, you start building your brand. So the moment, moment you put that video out there, you're going to start building your brand. Yep. You're going to yeah, start doing it. Content is king uh, yeah. out there, uh, regardless of the form of the content. So whether it's blogging, podcasting, videos, uh, whatever. Um, and you've got to get it out the door. If, if you're waiting, uh, if you're saying, look, I'm going to wait to build that brand to, to put out the content, you're never going to build the brand. Um, yeah. and, and also you're going to be waiting a long time. Yeah. Um, the, the brand, like have it in mind, be mindful of those things. And I'm always doing research on things like I've, that's, I'm always tweaking things too. Um, the other thing is when you're, when you're doing that content too, part of the brand building. And I even said, like, when I started, I was like Mr. Robot and there were things I did. I reached out to some folks, got some feedback. There's uh, eventually comments started coming in as well that helped, uh, give us direction. Um, and you know, there were, there were things that I would pick something and then I work on that. It's a long game, right? It's not a short game. Uh, and there were things where I would like, one of the things was I didn't smile. I, I would always think I was smiling, but I never smiled. Uh, like I would watch it back. And that's the one beautiful thing about videos is you're seeing what you're doing and, uh, <laughs> and you see yourself a lot. And uh, I, I could see that I, I thought I was smiling, but I wasn't smiling. And so now I, I even think about that mentally and I can feel like when it is I'm smiling or, or at least attempting a smile. Uh, and so it, what I did was I would pick that for, for three weeks and I would work on that. Another thing was my hands. A lot of people had feedback uh, that my hands were distracting. I was like all over the place and very, you know, uh, Patrick had this too. Uh, and so I was just like, all right, cool. So for three weeks, I sat on my hands when I did the videos. And so now I'm more intentional about my hands. They're not as chaotic and all over the place. And so they're, they're part of the conversation. So that helped me. Uh, do that. And uh, so, so those are things. As you do more content, you will build that muscle, you will build those skills. Um, and then that will attribute to building the brand as well. And, and again, be mindful, do research about what brand building is. Uh, there's a lot of great books and stuff out there. The fact that you're here is good. Um, and then incorporate those things into what you're doing and, and just do one thing at a time. It doesn't yep. have to be everything at once. Like it's a long game, right? So you've got time. Uh, we've been doing this for six years and we're still tweaking things. So that's, yeah. Every day. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. And how do you balance, this one's from Colin. How do you balance giving fair criticism for products or features, knowing it can upset people you have relationships with? <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add. So there's a couple things. Uh, so one is, uh, I work for Microsoft yes. <laughs> and we're, we're doing videos on a Microsoft product. So I've got to keep that in mind as well. Yes. Um, and so we, we are fair in what we do, or at least we try to be. Um, but there, there are things like I'm not going to go and do like things bashing other products or, or services or, or think that that's also just not my style. Right. Um, and we'll, we want to be mindful. We do want to be fair, but we want to be, I try and stick to the facts, right? These yes. are the technical facts. I'm not going to, I don't, I'm not necessarily a divisive person or I don't try to be. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to please everyone, but um, I, I, I want to be mindful of those things. So it's, mm. it's something you have to consider. Also, some, sometimes that's part of your brand too, right? So I know there are some people where they, they are more edgy than what we are on Guy in a Cube, and sure. that's just part of their brand. And so if that's part of what you do and that's what you're going to build, then, then go after that. Figure out what your target audience is of the people that you want to go after and, and shape your brand off of that. Uh, that's just not something we've done on Guy in a Cube. Um, and I don't, uh, Patrick, I, I tell people, uh, I joke around about this. 
uh, cause sometimes we'll be brought in on a customer call on the Microsoft side and, uh, they'll say, Oh, do we, do we need to include both of you? And I made this comment. This is like a week or two ago. And I was just like, Oh no, 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 it's fine. Patrick's like my identical twin. He's, he's got it. <laughs> and I mean that in the sense, like we are actually, Pat, I've been blessed with this. Like Patrick and I are, are, we are on the same page yeah. and we've always been on the same page. And, uh, I know Crystal, my wife talks about that too, where, uh, she's like, you guys are like, it's it's like uncanny like like we we balance each other like we have we bring different things to the table but in terms of mindset and value and all of that like we we have very we're very similar um and so we've never and i don't know if you want to add to any of that no i think it just works it just works man and so i i think that's what what you said at the beginning about facts that's what we that's what guy and cube guy and cube is facts right we're showing you we're teaching you how to learn the clicks we're not criticizing people we're not we're not trying to, you know, sh- at the end of the day, if I do a video, it's because I wanted to do the video, right? Yeah. It's not to prove a point or disprove a point. It's because I want to do the video. Well, if you don't there, like it. I remember in one of our live streams too, I, I think this is when we had Jason Himmelstein and, and John White on, and there was something, I just threw something out there and like the chat just exploded. Um, so. And it was like, I'm like, oh my God. And like, I'm not afraid. Like, I don't mind if there's something that's divisive as long as it's not, uh, I, I don't want to be hurtful, yeah. right? Uh, that's the big thing I don't want to be. Being divisive and being and hurting people, that is not, in terms of our core values, that's not what we do. Nope. Uh, but if I'm going to throw something out, like I don't, I personally don't care what other people think about, uh, you know, necessarily like what I'm doing or whatnot. Like, I'm not going to lose sleep if someone doesn't agree with how I did something. And there's tons of people that don't agree yeah. with what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, or they think we should have done something differently. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah. Uh, criticism is good. And I, I will take that and, and figure out, okay, how can we incorporate that? Or how do we improve? I always want to improve what we're doing. But if we made a call, I'm like, look, no, I think that that was the right thing to do or yeah. the content we should have put out or how we did that. And someone just doesn't agree with it. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah. Um, I don't lose sleep over that. Um, you're going to, again, part of a brand is you're going to have haters and we do have haters. Um, and you know, Patrick, I mean, there was one time, uh, I'll bring this up, uh, <laughs> that Patrick didn't even, you didn't even cue in on it. No, um, no. but there was a comment where, uh, someone was being racist. Yep. Uh, it was a racist comment and I saw it immediately. Um, it, I, I think Patrick, you you're kind of the personality. You didn't read into it that way. Like no. you didn't necessarily take personal no. offense. Um, and what I loved, and this is part of the brand too. I said you're gonna have haters and you're gonna have the zealots or the people that are like your super fans. And man, people in the in the in the uh, the chat comments. of the video, the comments, yeah. they jumped on that person. Yeah. And we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to do anything. There. We didn't have to do anything. Um, yeah. And yeah. so. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have uh, you're gonna do things where people are gonna disagree with you. Uh, they're not gonna do it, but stick to your core values. Stick to what it is you want your brand to be, and go for it. People are gonna gravitate to you. I, I I absolutely know there are people where I vehemently disagree with how they're doing things, but they're successful in their niche or how they're doing it, and you know that that works for them, and that's okay. Uh, doesn't affect me at the end of the day, and. Great. All right. This one's from Elizabeth. How do you see personal branding in tech changing as a result of this new virtual world? As someone used to presenting in person, I feel like I'm lost trying to acclimate to virtual conferences and managing social media. It's, uh, yeah, That's go me. for it, Patrick. That's yeah. me. That's me, Elizabeth. Patrick right? is I... not a social, like social media and Patrick do not go along. Right. Every now and then I'll tweet something or post something on Facebook or whatever, but I'm not that guy. I am not, I am, I'm absolutely not that guy. And so try, if it was, if I was out doing this alone, you guys probably wouldn't know me. Let's be honest. You know, I would still be writing a blog post. I would probably still be writing blogs and not sitting here talking about this, you know, and cause I, I struggle, I struggle a lot and I'm still, I struggle with this every day, uh, Elizabeth, I'm struggling trying to figure out how do I do a presentation? I went so far as I have a standing desk. I put a webcam on top of my monitor and I move my chairs out of the way. So when I'm presenting, I'm actually standing up and presenting and doing stuff because sitting in a chair and presenting, it just inhibits me and it drives me crazy and I lose all my energy and all my focus. So I think you, 
as if you're like me, you have to adjust. You got to pivot. You got to be able to adjust or be able to pivot to it. And I'm finding ways in this new world that we're living in to make that adjustment because the standing desk is helping. The webcam, while Adam hates it, oh, when I'm doing awful. a presentation, and I promised him that I wouldn't do it for past at a, all. When you've got a much better camera rig going on <laughs> and you're using the webcam, it, it hurts. It hurts. And so, but I can't stand up with the webcam because I would have to raise the camera because I'm a little tall and it's, it's a struggle. I will, I will be honest with you, but you're going to have to learn how to pivot because we are in a, this new realm. And I think even after this is over, we'll still have a lot of activities that I think are going to be virtual. And yes. you and I, Elizabeth, will need, need to figure out how. And so the recommendation that I can give you is try to make the space that you're working in, even though you're virtual, try to make it. And Adam tells me this all the time there's your audience right there, right? And I'm pointing to the camera. That's my audience and I'm learning, right? This is my audience and I'm just gonna have to figure out how to adjust my workspace so that I am presenting in, per in, in, in person. So it, it takes some imagination, but that's the only, I mean, that's the best advice that yeah, I can think of. The other thing I'll add, like, you know, you're not uh, like in Patrick's case, like he's not a social media person. Um, no. And that, that also goes back to the thing where I've said Patrick and I balance each other because yeah. I handle, I, I do all of that on the social media side for Guy in a Cube. Yeah. Sometimes we'll be at a conference. I'm like, Patrick, give me your phone. <laughs> And like, I'll ghostwrite some of his tweets and then people will be like, oh man, that was a great tweet. And I'm like, yeah, he didn't write that. Um, or like, Patrick, you got to use hashtags. Like that, that's a thing on Twitter. Um, no, you know, no. so it's, uh, the, those are things where if you want to build a brand, again, you have to get attention. And so social media is one of those tools that you can leverage to get that attention. Yeah. Um, and it's something you have to work at. So if you do, if your intent is to build a brand, then that's something you're going to have to yep. kind of fight through a little bit and figure out and, and figure out where that is for you too. Like, yeah. Um, the, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll leave it there. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I feel for you. Uh, it is a yeah. thing. This is a new virtual world and I see, we see so many people now doing, trying to fit into that virtual world and getting on YouTube, getting on, you know, doing more blogging, doing those things to get, you know, because we don't have that in-person connection anymore. So. so just one more thing. When you start, Elizabeth, when you start doing it, don't take it personal, right? Yes. And like Adam said, right, I, re I read the comments and some of our comments are harsh, right? Stop stop doing the yo, you know? Oh, you move the your yo thing too comes much, up every once in a while. Blah, 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 right? Don't take any of that stuff personal, right? Don't yep. take any, and I talked to Adam, about. I was like, I was kind of in my feelings about that. He's like, ah, you'll have haters, you'll have haters, you know? Yeah, so fine. don't, when you start doing whatever it is that you're trying to do, don't take it personal because those, you don't know them. It's likely you'll never meet that person. And even if you did, who cares anyway, you yeah. know? This is the videos that I create, I'm hoping that it'll help someone. The content that we build, that we put out, I'm hoping that someone will like it. If they don't, if it gets one view, hey, one person watched it, you know? Yep. And so any feedback, it's just constructive criticism. That's how I look at it. It's just constructive criticism. Some of it I can use and embrace and make myself better. Some of it is just kind of like, ah, oh well, you know? And I had to learn that. I did have to learn that because I, I look at it as like, look, I'm putting my heart and my effort and all my extra time into giving you this content and you can't come and say something bad about me, but it is what it is, you know? There's always gonna be that one person out there um, that's gonna try to, you know, uh, bring you down. Just don't let them just well, the thing I found too, is sometimes those, con those type of comments too, is, uh, you know, I got to wonder, like, are they just jealous that they're not doing it oh. too? Or I'm like, uh, some of that comes into it too, or they, they just got to hate because they don't necessarily have that. And, yeah. uh, they come out of the woodwork and, but yeah, Patrick's right. You gotta, don't, don't let that stop you. Take it's it hard. Personal. It is hard. Yeah. Um, but you got to try and fight past that. Yeah. Don't take it personal. All right, Craig. Great, good advice. Um, from Sunil, how much, there's a couple questions in here, I like this, but uh, Sunil asks, how much time, percentage, and roughly daily, weekly hours do you spend on this effort as compared to uh, customer engagements? Yeah. I'm going to answer first because Adam's going to be much longer than mine. So <laughs> honestly, it, I, the video that you see that I record probably takes no more than 10 minutes for me to record that video. And I may record two videos a week. Um, but the back for me, cause I'll call Adam. He goes, <laughs> I'll call Adam and he'll go, 
Yeah, you, you're just putting too much work because it's for me, it's about the demo, you know, and like even for our a session, time on that. even for our session yesterday, I was like that night I was texting them videos like, oh, look what I'm adding. I created a monitor, you know, so I do spend a lot of time on the I back was watching end. TV. He was working on a demo. <laughs> I do spend more time. I spend more time. And so I would say probably, you know, from from a if we look at it from a week perspective, it's a couple hours a day. It, it, it spans out to a couple a couple hours a day for me. And it's, but it's not like recording videos or anything like that. It's just me tinkering. And some of it goes directly to the videos or to Guy in the Q, but a lot of it's just, you know, me learning, personal learning and, you know, things to help help myself grow. So a couple hours a day, I probably spend, well, uh, you know, maybe an too hour. Is, is like, we have those customer engagements, we get the idea, we're actually tinkering yep. around on that. And then we're yep. like, oh, you know, that make a good video. Yep. And yep. then trying to piece that together. And um, on, on my, so, so before the video editor, um, <laughs> there was a stark difference between the amount of time that Patrick and I spent on this. Uh, so Patrick would, as he said, record that video and then drop it into a folder that magically then ended up on YouTube. Uh, and it was amazing. And uh, yeah, the other side of that was me uh, getting up at 5 a.m. and spending a couple hours editing and, yeah. you know, doing yeah. thumbnails, yeah. And keyword research and putting it on the web page, doing all the social media stuff, doing, uh, you know, all of those things like getting the, getting the live stream staged, doing all the work on getting the live stream set up working that, you know, it's uh, there, there was a lot of stuff I did that uh, was very time consuming. I, I would say before the video editor, I was spending easily 20 to 30 hours a week just on Guy in a Cube past the day job, right? And so everything I do on Guy in a Cube, it's not during the day job. I know right now it's like there's a conference going on, uh, but in a normal day, I don't do that because my day job consumes that time. Um, and so it's early mornings and weekends is where that time would go. And uh, so that goes back to the comment of you know, uh, our, our family's very supportive. Um, so yeah. Um, now with the video editor that takes off a lot of burden, I would say on average now, maybe five to 10 hours a week is going to yeah. cube. If yeah. that, if yeah. that, uh, cause it's more know. tinkering. And I think that's yeah. if, we, so people always, people will always say, Hey, does this work? I go, well, I don't know. Let me go try it. You know, that's now. one of the things about Adam and I, because if somebody sends us a note and I mean, I'm I, let's go try it. And then I, me, I go down this rabbit hole and I'll end up there for hours and hours. And Adam's like, just let it go, dude. Just let it go. Just, just let stop. it go. Stop. Just stop. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know? Yeah. And so if you take away that time, he's right. You know, not actually not that much time. Cause we're lazy. We, we're yes. lazy. Yes. We, yeah, we I was, are lazy. I was going to bring yeah. that up again. Like, you know, I, I say like maybe five, 10 hours a week now, I should be spending a lot yep. more time on that because yep. <laughs> there's things and ideas that Patrick have, and I have talked about. Like there's some core stuff we want to work on yep. uh, that we've been extremely lazy about. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I should be spending, you know, 20 to 40 hours a week on yep. it. And I'm right now I'm spending about five to 10. Uh, so lazy. lazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Craig. Okay. Uh, from Kevin, given your day job, this question may not be applicable, but how do you overcome the feeling that the content you're putting out there may not be as helpful or good to the community as you intend it to? And does that ever take away your motivation? Mm. I, I, I will tell you this, Adam takes away my motivation. <laughs> <laughs> This is true. <laughs> he does. He does. I deflate him so much. I, I have all these grand ideas. I'm, oh, what about this? What about that? You know? And oh, connecting to the SQL server on Linux is going to be amazing. People are going to love this. I'm like, dude, it's just a connection string. <laughs> even if you, you take Microsoft, right? Because we are Microsoft employees. Even if you take Microsoft out of the equation and say, all right, you guys don't work for Microsoft. Um, I, I do think about when I'm when I'm developing some content, I do think about is people gonna like this? You know, should I do this? And then I, Adam's kind of my sounding board. I'll call him up and I'll say, all right, dude, I'm thinking about these four videos. And he'll go, only one of them. The other three, nobody cares about that stuff, Patrick. Nobody cares about, you know, writing this XMLA script to do this. Nobody cares about that, you know, so don't do it. And I go, oh. 
Well, uh, and when it know. comes to the content too, is we try not to, we're not, right, sometimes we do it, but we don't necessarily like doing it as a, we're, we're just doing a video on a feature. Like yeah. here's, here's the checkbox that you can check. I don't like that. It's not yeah. engaging. It's, there's no, not, not necessarily value there. And so we try and come up with a story for it, right? Like what's the, what's the scenario? Why would you care about this? Uh, and try, and what's the emotion that we're trying to convey with this or trying to solve? Um, and so we try and come up with that stuff too. And yeah, it, it's a, it, it, believe it or not, that is at times, I mean, I, at times this year, especially I'll call Adam up. I was like, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. I don't, I have no idea what I'm going to do a video on next week. You we'll know? Talk through it. It's a struggle. And we talk through it because I'm always thinking, oh man, I want to make sure that they can use like the video that came out yesterday, for example, images. I will, I will not tell you how many times I told Adam, I don't want to do that video. He didn't, he didn't I want don't, to I'm not doing that video because nobody's going to watch it. Turned out. Uh, we've been <laughs> wrong so many times on that front. Like, I'm mean, like, oh, it's okay. It'll be our, and I'm like, wow, that thing like is like our best viewed video ever. Who knew? And it's just like, it, it's, it's a conversation that you have to have. And I, I think we're fortunate because we have each other to, to kind of keep us honest. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, if you don't have it, then you really, you got to put some time and think about and look at the path. We always try to, pre- I mean, look at the journey that you've taken. Cause we always try to say, oh, this is going to be a great video or this video is going to suck. But like Adam said, you have no way. If I can figure that algorithm out, oh, we man. have a million subscribers. Yeah. We have a million subscribers right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're getting down there. Yeah, we're we're getting we got we got about five minutes left or four oh, four minutes or so. Good, good timing. Yeah, uh, yeah. We one from Manuel here. All right. Uh, at the time where Guy and Cube started, there was not so many YouTubers as there is now. The content quality of the players has increased. Yes. So how to lose the fear to start since the technical sessions, blogging and videos as beginners are low, what would yep. you recommend to start with a minimal viable product? So so what I'm going to say is that the content itself, the value of the content is the number one priority. That's the number one thing you should care about. Yep. All of the technical aspects of your camera, the audio, all that stuff, you can work on that over time. Don't And in the beginning, like, don't worry about it. Just, just start, just keep building on it, right? Um, but now one thing I'll say is the camera. So like I've, I've got two cameras here. Uh, next to me. This is this is our my live streaming setup. This is where I do everything. Uh, the camera I'm looking at here, this is a very high dollar camera, probably not something anyone in their right mind would actually buy. Not even uh, the one yet, not even the other one. The, the other one, which is the no. same one Patrick has. No. No one probably would buy that either. Um, some people have them. More people have been <laughs> buying stuff like that, but uh, uh, your phone, right? Like this is, this is, I got a great camera on it and I see people now using that to record and it's yeah. good enough. Um, and so, or the webcam that Patrick had, it's a hundred, you know, $200 webcam. And it's, I think it's crappy, but it works it's if that's what you got. Webcam. So wait, wait, I gave this webcam to my daughter to use for her virtual school and she brought it back down. She's like, oh no, can't use that thing. It's too clear. It's too clear. It shows too much. So get out of here. It's a good webcam, man. Yeah. It's a good webcam. <laughs> It's not as good as this camera, though. No, uh, it's not as good as that one. Yes. Uh, so, so all that stuff will come over time. So don't yeah. don't worry about that. Uh, but you, you're right. The virtual world world though has elevated the quality of the content because more people are doing it. A lot of the equipment's hard to find. We were Patrick and I were lucky because we had most of the equipment before COVID hit, uh, except for Patrick's Go XLR, which took Oof. a little while. Ooh, yeah. um, so and like everyone else was struggling to get stuff, and I'm like, yeah, we already got all of it. Yeah. Um, but you don't need any of that stuff. So mm-hmm. the, focus on the content, focus on, um, you know, putting value into that. And then everything else is secondary. Uh, if you do look at the technical stuff though, audio is more important than video. Uh-huh. Uh, people will be more forgiving of bad video than they will of bad audio. So yeah. make sure your audio, and you can buy like a little $10 uh, lapel microphone that's cheap and um, mm-hmm. doesn't have to be crazy expensive like our stuff. So, there was one part of that question where they were saying it's beginner level is low. Mm-hmm. And Adam and I talk about this a lot. If you look at a lot of our videos, they're beginner level. It's beginner level stuff. stuff mostly, right? That's actually where we get the views as beginner content, not, because not the more technical. If you look at anything that you're trying to teach every day, there's a new person 
that's yeah. learning. It's a broader reach. Right. That's learning what you're trying to teach. Power BI, introduction to Power BI. You know, and whenever I do that session, they're standing room only. Oh, yeah. It, yep. It's standing room only yep. every time I when do it. When I do a talk on Power BI embedded, which is more of a developer focus. It's like five people. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little more. <laughs> Yeah, no, beginner is always good. Yeah. All right, uh, Craig, one I think more? we got time for one more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's grab that one from uh, Mr. Steve Jones. What oh. was your favorite interview? <laughs> Just got a text from Steve Jones. Yeah. My, my interview, my favorite interview. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Go so ahead. I, I would say the 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 Steve was was amazing, and that was yes, fun. That was a good absolutely. time. Absolutely, that was a good time. Um, I, I would say the the first video we did with Justina though was probably the, yes. the one that I, because she hit him in the face. Yes. <laughs> on accident. <laughs> and so that was enjoyable. Um, so, but yeah, no, we love, we, we always love doing stuff with other folks. We're looking for ways to do that more. Yes. Um, and, yes. Uh, yeah. We have a few ideas for some people coming up. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. But, yeah. but Steve, you, you were, you were definitely you were enjoyable. And we definitely loved, we loved one of video. our favorites, Steve. Definitely. Can't wait to see you in person, Steve. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All righty. All okay. right, folks. So that is the time that we have. Thank you so much for hanging out with us uh, and uh, all the questions. Uh, it was a great discussion. Uh, we hope you found value in that. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to continue the conversation, hit us up on Twitter. That is, uh, Twitter is is the thing I focus on the most uh, in terms of contact uh, items. So we can continue it there uh, and then enjoy the rest of the past conference. Yep. All right.